Hi, this is Jim Smith with Pan Pipe Productions. Water Treatment in 10 Minutes is a series of training videos for water treatment operators who want to learn new skills, enhance existing skills, or improve plant operations. In this video, I will discuss the key concepts of breakpoint chlorination. There are several chemicals that can be used to inject chlorine into the water. One option is chlorine gas, which is Cl2. When chlorine is added to water, hypochlorous acid, HOCl, and hypochlorite ion, OCl- are formed. The combination of hypochlorous acid and the hypochlorite ion is the free chlorine residual. This reaction is pH dependent and at a pH of 7.5, the concentration of hypochlorous acid and the hypochlorite ion are equal. As the pH goes below 7.5, hypochlorous acid becomes the dominant compound. Hypochlorous acid is the workhorse of the two compounds and is 80 times more effective than the hypochlorite ion for disinfecting E. coli, a common bacteria. Disinfection is influenced by the concentration of the disinfectant, the temperature of the water, and the pH of the water. Before ammonia is fed, the water is disinfected with free chlorine. This is primary disinfection, and its purpose is to remove pathogenic or disease-causing organisms from the water. Then ammonia is added to create a secondary disinfectant, monochloramine. Monochloramine is not as reactive as free chlorine, meaning it is more stable and lasts longer. Therefore, it's better than free chlorine for maintaining a disinfectant concentration or residual in the distribution system. The amount of ammonia fed at a plant is based on the chlorine to ammonia as nitrogen ratio. This ratio is based on the molecular weight of chlorine, Cl2, which is 70, and the molecular weight of nitrogen, which is 14. The molecular weight of ammonia is 17. To determine the nitrogen portion of ammonia, divide the molecular weight of nitrogen, 14, by the molecular weight of ammonia, 17, to get ammonia as nitrogen. At a 5 to 1 ratio, the ammonia added to the water will combine with hypochlorous acid and the free ammonia concentration is zero. If the ratio is less than 5 to 1, there will be some free ammonia in the water. The chlorine to ammonia as nitrogen ratio should be between 4.5 to 1 and 5 to 1 to minimize free ammonia in the distribution system. Excessive free ammonia in the distribution system can cause nitrification and negatively affect water quality. The optimum conditions for forming monochloramine is at a pH of 8.3 and a water temperature between 20 and 30 degrees Celsius. If you are interested in more information on how to calculate the proper dose and feed rates of chlorine and ammonia, please watch our How to Perform Dose Calculations video. Monochloramine is created by mixing ammonia into water with a free chlorine residual. Depending on the pH of the water, it is also possible to create dichloramine and trichloramine. One way of remembering the different chloramine species is monochloramine has one chlorine, dichloramine has two chlorines, and trichloramine has three chlorines. These species are referred to as combined chlorine. Total chlorine is the sum of the combined chlorine residual and the free chlorine residual. The pH range between 7.5 and 9.0 is ideal for forming monochloramine. Dichloramine is not detectable above a pH of 7.5, and trichloramine is not detectable above a pH of 4. Monochloramine is 50 times less effective than a free chlorine residual. This is why the monochloramine residual lasts longer in a distribution system compared to a free chlorine residual and is an effective secondary disinfectant. It is important for any operator working with chloramines to understand the breakpoint curve. Understanding where the plant is on the curve ensures the plant will maintain water quality goals and ensures the plant will always meet state and federal regulations. The x-axis of the curve is the chlorine dose, or how much chlorine is added to the water. The y-axis is the total chlorine residual. For this video, we made the range from 0 to 2.5 milligrams per liter. But this scale can change based on the target total chlorine residual for the water utility. When chlorine is added to the water, it reacts with compounds that have an oxidant demand. This is called a chlorine demand. For example, iron, manganese, and natural organic matter react with chlorine but do not form a chlorine residual. Consequently, there is a gap on the x-axis before the curve starts to develop. This gap will vary depending on water quality. Once the chlorine demand is met, the chlorine can react with ammonia to create monochloramine. As more chlorine is added, the monochloramine concentration increases until it reaches the maximum at this peak. At this point, the chlorine to ammonia as nitrogen ratio is 5 to 1. At a 5 to 1 ratio, all of the ammonia added to the water is combined and there is no free ammonia. At a 5 to 1 ratio or less, monochloramine is the dominant species. 
If more chlorine is added past the 5 to 1 ratio, the chlorine residual begins to decrease. Monochloramine begins to break down, and if the pH of the water is less than 8, dichloramine can be formed. Other chemical byproducts will also be formed in this part of the curve. As the chlorine dose increases, we will eventually end up at breakpoint. The chlorine to ammonia as nitrogen ratio at breakpoint is typically between 7 to 1 and 9 to 1, depending on the water quality at your plant. Breakpoint is defined as the point on the curve where the combined and free chlorine concentrations are zero. However, with many waters at breakpoint, the DPD chlorine residual test does not indicate a zero total chlorine residual due to chemical compounds created from adding chlorine and ammonia to the water. These compounds interfere with the test and cause a false positive by indicating there is a disinfectant residual in the water when one does not exist. The curve shown here indicates a chlorine residual of 0.5 at breakpoint, but this is for illustrative purposes only. The total chlorine residual at breakpoint depends on water quality and will vary from utility to utility. As more chlorine is added past breakpoint, the hypochlorous acid and hypochlorite ion concentrations increase at a 1 to 1 ratio. If 1 mg per liter of chlorine is added, the free chlorine residual will increase by 1 mg per liter. You are an operator on shift and you just completed your laboratory test. The total chlorine residual is 2 mg per liter. The free chlorine residual is 0. The free ammonia is 0.27 mg per liter. Where are we on the breakpoint curve? Since we have a free ammonia of 0.27 mg per liter and no free chlorine, we know we are to the left of the 5 to 1 ratio. The first step is to determine the ammonia dose at a 5 to 1 ratio. This is the point where all the free ammonia is combined. 2 divided by 5 gives us a 0.4 mg per liter dose. To determine the actual fee rate at the plant, we need to add the 0.4 mg per liter, which we would feed at a 5 to 1 ratio, to the free ammonia concentration of 0.27 mg per liter. So we add those together, we get 0.67 mg per liter. This would be our total ammonia feed rate. Next, we divide the total chlorine residual of 2 mg per liter by the ammonia feed rate of 0.67 mg per liter to get the ammonia as nitrogen ratio of 3 to 1. A 3 to 1 ratio would be about here on the curve. In this example, the total chlorine residual is 2 mg per liter, the free chlorine residual is 0, and the free ammonia is 0 0.02 mg per liter. So where are we on the breakpoint curve? Since we have free ammonia and no free chlorine, we know we are to the left of the 5 to 1 ratio. As in the previous problem, the first step is to determine the ammonia dose at a 5 to 1 ratio. So we divide 2 mg per liter by 5 and get a 0.4 mg per liter. This would be our dose at a 5 to 1 ratio. Then we add the free ammonia concentration of 0 0.02 to get a total ammonia feed rate of 0.42 mg per liter. Next we divide the chlorine residual of 2 mg per liter by the ammonia feed rate, 0.42 mg per liter, to get a chlorine to ammonia as nitrogen ratio of 4.8 to 1. A 4.8 to 1 ratio would be about here on the curve. This is a good ratio for a plant to operate at since it minimizes the amount of free ammonia entering the distribution system. In this example, the free ammonia concentration is zero, the free chlorine residual is zero, and we do not have data on the total chlorine residual. So where are we on the curve? We would be anywhere to the right of the 5 to 1 ratio and to the left of breakpoint on the curve. If we had a free chlorine residual, we'd be somewhere to the right of breakpoint in this area on the curve. You are an operator alone on shift and it is 2 o'clock in the morning because problems always occur in the middle of the night or late on a Friday afternoon and you get a low chlorine alarm. The plant effluent water has a total chlorine residual of 2 mg per liter with an ammonia dose of 0.4 at a 5 to 1 ratio, and suddenly the plant effluent total chlorine residual drops to 1 mg per liter. Should the operator immediately turn up the chlorine feed rate? The answer is no. The first thing to do is to investigate the chlorine and ammonia feed rates to ensure both feed rates are correct before making any major adjustments at the plant. In this scenario, there was a leak on the ammonia feed pump and the ammonia feed rate decreased from 0.4 to 0.3 mg per liter. This change moved the plant from a 5 to 1 ratio to a 6.7 to 1 ratio. So now the plant is about here on the curve. 
If the operator would have immediately turned up the chlorine without checking the status of both the chlorine and ammonia feed pumps, the plant could have moved from this point on the curve to break point and put the plant out of compliance and caused a water quality problem. I hope this video was helpful. Please write your comments below and let us know if you would like us to create a video on a specific subject. If you like the treatment in 10 minute series, please subscribe.